It's actually pretty crazy to think that this super small form factor mini PC can run games at 4K over 60 FPS. I mean, we're up in the 90s here with Forza Horizon 5. This is really cool. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be adding some major GPU power to the world's smallest 12 core mini PC. You heard that right. This thing is a full blown PC and by itself it's actually awesome. It's known as the Kados Mine and they will be launching an Indiegogo very soon. They're touting this as a next gen portable workstation and you can definitely get some work done on it. And by itself with the integrated graphics you can actually game on it. But I think the coolest thing about the Kados Mine is they're going to be offering different modules for it. So this is basically a modular mini PC. They've got a GPU dock plan for it, which is going to contain an RTX 4060. They've also got kind of a laptop dock, which will turn this into a portable laptop with a screen. And they've got an IO expansion dock, which just adds a ton of IO to this tiny PC. But at the time of making this video, the only module that I have access to is actually the IO dock but that's not going to stop me from adding some major GPU power to this thing. Now, unfortunately, we can't just connect a GPU directly to it. We can't plug a video card into this mini PC like it sits, and we actually don't even have Thunderbolt on this unit the way it is. It does have two full function USB Type-C ports around the back, and on the bottom, it's actually got a proprietary port known as the Mine port, which is going to allow us to connect to their modules. But like I mentioned, I don't have access to their external eGPU dock just yet. But luckily, we've got a free M.2 slot on the bottom of this unit. So connecting an Oculink eGPU is actually really simple. This unit does support two M.2 SSDs, and we've got this free slot right here on the bottom underneath this magnetically attached cover. So adding an Oculink adapter here is actually super easy. And this slot does run at PCIe X4 3.0, so we can still get some really great performance over Oculink. And if you're not familiar with the Oculink interface, it's been on the market for a while. It's actually mainly used in servers. And just to put it out there, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4 will run it up to 40 gigs a second. Oculink can do up to 63 gigs a second. So connecting an eGPU over Oculink will allow you to get better bandwidth. And in turn, you'll get better performance. And in my experience, it's just a lot more stable. And there's lots of ways to go about this. You can buy a simple Oculink dock on Amazon for pretty cheap. But you will need to add your own GPU and power supply to this little dock. But luckily, GPD has actually come through recently with the GPD G1 Oculink eGPU. This actually serves dual purposes. It can be connected over Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or USB 4. We've got that connection up front, but we've also got Oculink, which is going to give us better performance. And this is how I've been connecting it to my laptops, handhelds, and obviously mini PCs. This is a fully self-contained eGPU. It's got a Radeon RX 7600 MXT, which puts out some amazing performance. And over that USB 4 port up front, it'll put out 60 watts. The Kados mine needs to be powered over USB Type-C, so we can actually power the unit and power the eGPU with a single cable leading from the wall. We don't need multiple power supplies here. And it's really easy to connect this. So I've got my Oculink cable here. I've got the uh, adapter plugged into the mind already, that free M.2 slot on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and plug this right into the front of the eGPU. Once we have this connected, we can actually go ahead and power everything up. And if we wanted to run, you know, uh, power from the wall to the mind, we could. But the G1 does put out 60 watts. So we can actually just use another USB Type-C cable from the G1 to the mind to get power over to this mini PC. And there's several ways that we could kind of set this up to make it look nice. We could do a horizontal layout. We could do a vertical layout. And if you went vertically, it would look a little something like this. Not too bad. Personally, I think I'm going to go horizontal with this setup, you know, right under my monitor. But uh, real quick, let's go over the specs here. Now that we've got everything connected, when it comes to the CPU, we've got a Raptor Lake Intel i7 1360p. 12 cores, 16 threads, and on those four performance cores, we can get a boost up to 5 gigahertz. The Mind has 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM running at 5200 megahertz, and it came with a pre-installed 1 terabyte PCIe 4.0 M.2 NVMe. Now, of course, with that Raptor Lake 1360p, we get Intel Iris Xe graphics with 96 execution units. But instead of using that, we're going to be using this AMD Radeon RX 7600M XT connected over this Oculink adapter. It's got 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, a base clock of 1500 megahertz, and a boost clock up to 2615. 
we should actually see some really great performance out of this little machine once it's set up correctly. I'm running Windows 11 here, and as you can see, I've set this up in the horizontal position. Actually sits right under my monitor pretty nicely. And I'm just using power from the wall instead of running another cable from that USB 4 up front on the G1e GPU. We've got that i7 1360p, 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5, and the 7600M. So far, actually seeing some really great performance here. And I wanted to show you real quick from uh, GPU-Z, we are running at PCIe X4 3.0. I know it might be a bit hard to see, but as soon as I put a load on it, we can see that it is really X4 3.0 instead of X4 4.0. The other M.2 slot internally on this mini PC is 4.0, but the one we can access externally is only 3. Still, this thing is putting out some great performance. And the first thing I wanted to show off was a little bit of 4K gaming with Forza Horizon 5. I understand that this game is very well optimized. I do have Afterburner running up in the top left hand corner. And the 1360p in the Kados mine actually runs it up to 32 watts. Most of the time, since we're not working with the IGP, we don't even need to hit 30 watts with it. On average, we're at 25. And from the settings, you can see that we are at high. The only thing I disable is ray tracing with these external cards. And we're at 4K with this, getting an average of 93 FPS on this mini PC setup. AMD doesn't consider the 7600 MXT a 4K card. They don't even consider it a 1440p card, but in my testing with this external GPU, I found that high 1440p with most new AAA games is totally possible as long as you have enough CPU power. But 1080p Ultra is really where this card shines. Next thing I wanted to show off were a few benchmarks, and first up we've got 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 42,607. Firestrike gave us a really impressive 20,240. And finally, we've got Time Spy here with a 9,549. Really great synthetic scores, and as you saw with Forza Horizon 5, we can do 4K. But like I mentioned, Ultra 1080p is really where it's at. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to my game capture. We're going to test out some more games. First up, we've got God of War 1080p, ultra settings, no resolution scale, so we don't have any FSR or anything like that on. I got an average of 94 FPS and I was pretty impressed here. I actually thought that this little uh, 1360p was going to hold us back a bit. We've only got four performance cores and those will boost up to 5 gigahertz, but most of the time we're going to be utilizing a lot of those efficiency cores. We've got eight of them here and they go up to 3.7 gigahertz, but it looks like we've got more than enough with this 1360p. I always like to test at least one fighting game, so I went with Mortal Kombat 11, we're at 1440p, very high, and I guess that's their ultra with this game, it's just very high, so everything's maxed out. And this will run at 4K, it did have a couple dips at very high, but dropping shadows down to high at 4K will net us a constant 60 FPS, and if you take a look at Afterburner, we're only pulling around 13 watts from the CPU. Next up, we've got GTA 5 1080p, very high, and going into this, I was under the impression that I had it set to 1440p, but taking a look at the frame rate, I just had to go back and check the footage. We are at 1080. We got an average of 133 FPS. This will run at 1440p, very high, at around 85 on average. Pushing it at 4K, very high with the 7600M, but if you don't mind dropping it down to a high and normal settings, you can do 4K locked at 60 also. Spider-Man Remastered is one I always like to test with these external GPUs. I've had nothing but issues doing uh, external Thunderbolt eGPUs with this game, no matter what GPU I have. So seeing Oculink performing so well is very, very promising. We got an average of 88 FPS, 1080p, very high, no resolution scale. And the final game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, high, no resolution scale. And for some reason with my game capture, you can see I got a little bit of screen tearing going on, but we're not going under 60. I should have probably just locked VSync at around 120 FPS, but we're good to go with this game. We got an average of 87 FPS. And in the past, I have tested this at 1440p on different systems with the 7600M attached over Oculink, and it will do it, but we need to drop it down to medium instead of high settings. Now, 
So overall, I think this worked out really well with the Kados mine, but I still want to get my hands on their eGPU dock. It's going to have that RTX 4060, and we're going to be using the mine port on the bottom, so I'm not exactly sure what that's running at. Could be PCIe X4 4.0, might see a little better performance there. But this was a test I definitely wanted to run to see if you could just buy the Kados mine and use an Oculink eGPU. And uh, as you saw, it actually works out really well. And like I mentioned, you don't specifically need the GPD G1 to do this. This is just really easy for me to access. You can head over to Amazon and buy an Oculink adapter. Comes with the board, comes with the cable. You will need a power supply and a GPU, but you could put something together that's even more powerful than this for probably cheaper if you've already got a GPU laying around. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Kados Mind, I will leave some links to their official website in the description. And don't forget their Indiegogo will be launching soon. And as soon as I can get my hands on the other modules that they'll be offering, I will make a couple more videos. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.